Hi there, Amazon recently released two new Kindles, the Kindle Paperwhite and the Kindle Paperwhite Signature Edition. Now I already have a very in-depth thorough review of the Kindle Paperwhite. Watch that video first, link on the screen right now for that. But today, I wanna to talk about the Kindle Paperwhite Signature Edition. We're gonna be focusing our attention on all the differences between the Signature model and the regular Kindle Paperwhite. We're going through all the major feature differences and all of that fun stuff. Now before jumping into that, one thing I wanna mention, I get asked all the time what books I like to read on my Kindle. If you're interested in knowing the books I read, I recently started a new newsletter called Bookmarks. Every single week on Wednesday, I email out the top lessons I've learned from the books I'm currently reading. If that sounds like something you're interested in, link for that down below. Now let's actually jump into it. The regular Kindle Paperwhite starts at 139. The signature edition starts at 189. $40 difference and you get four additional features for buying the signature edition. Now the first thing you'll be getting when you pay the extra 50 bucks for the signature model is a removal of advertisements from your screensaver. Now honestly speaking, it really bothers me that Amazon charges money to remove ads from your Kindle. I believe that reading a Kindle should be a mindful experience and having ads and recommendations all over the place really takes away from that. But it's something they do, if you buy a Kindle, half the money that you spend for the signature edition, almost half of it is going towards removing ads from the Kindle screensaver. If you buy the regular baseline model, you can actually remove ads from that too for $20, but you can see $20 is almost half of the 50 bucks you're spending for the signature model. It's not worth getting the signature model just for this feature alone. You can buy the baseline model and pay the extra $20 and remove it from there. They have an option for that if you buy the baseline. You don't have to get the signature model to remove the ads from the screensaver. Now, one thing you do have to buy the signature model for is additional storage capacity. The baseline Kindle Paperwhite only has eight gigabytes of storage. And I use the word only in air quotes because eight gigabytes on a Kindle is actually quite a bit of storage. Upgrading 32 in today's world may seem like something you should do, but in reality, when reading books, it's not something you need to do. I have a whole video talking about storage capacities on Kindle, link for that on the screen right now. Let me summarize it real quick though. When reading books, they take up such little space on your Kindle, you don't need much storage capacity. Even if you have a few audio books on your Kindle and on top of regular books, maybe some PDFs, you are probably still gonna be fine with the lowest capacity at eight gigabytes. Having more than eight gigs is really only meant for people who absolutely know they're gonna be putting massive files on their Kindle. For most people, I would say 99% of people who read on Kindle, you don't need more than eight gigs of storage. So again, on the signature edition, you're getting 32 gigabytes of storage is a big upgrade from the eight gigabytes on the baseline model. But again, I don't think it's worth it. It's not really something you're gonna need at the end of the day. So far, we have two of the features down, no ads and also more storage capacity. The third feature you're getting on the signature edition is the ambient light sensor. If you don't know what that is, it's basically a little sensor on the top of the screen that lets you automatically adjust your brightness. Similar to how your phone works, it'll auto adjust just the brightness up and down depending where you're reading. The ambient light sensor is a nice to have. I think of it as a first world perk. If you wanna have something just automatically adjust the brightness for you, it's nice to have, but it's not a requirement by any means. I really don't think most people will even notice they have it if they didn't know they already had it. So along those lines, I don't think it's worth getting the signature model just for that ambient light sensor. It is nice to have, but it's not worth it just for that. Let's move on to the last feature you get with the signature and this may be something that some people consider worth upgrading for, and that is wireless charging. This to me is the most interesting thing they've added to the Signature Edition. Out of all the features they could have made on your Kindle, they decided to bring wireless charging to the Kindle lineup. I don't know why they did this, because Kindle batteries last for weeks at a time. You don't really charge your Kindle much to begin with. The whole point of wireless charging is for convenience. For our phone, for example, we charge our phones almost every single day. With the Kindle, you don't do that. You only charge it once every few weeks. Same thing with like an iPad, for example. iPads don't have wireless charging either because you don't have to charge them as much as your phone. And they're also much bigger devices. Putting them on a wireless charger is not an easy thing to do. Now, Amazon did not care about any of that. They still included wireless charging on their Kindle Paperwhite signature model. For most people, I don't think they really need it. Unless you're reading for hours and hours, every single day where your battery is dying, 
bag and you want to make sure your Kindle is always charged, having a wireless charger probably won't benefit most people. It has USB-C. The baseline Kindle Paperwhite now has USB-C. That by itself is a huge upgrade. You probably have a USB-C device in your backpack already. You can easily use one charger for all your devices now. That is all you really need. Wireless charging is really just a bonus feature that you may not even use. The other disadvantage of wireless charging on your Kindle is most wireless chargers you probably already have aren't going to work with your Kindle Paperwhite. And it's not because the standard is different, it's because the size of the Kindle Paperwhite is a lot bigger than most devices. If you have a docking station next to your bed where you put your phone to charge at night, your Kindle isn't really going to fit on that. You have to get a wireless charger that can support long devices and big devices. And they actually sell an Amazon Kindle wireless charger that you have to buy separately. And I don't really like this because you kind of have to buy that charger to have a convenient location to charge your Kindle. It's really just a way for them to sell more accessories. You can get it. It does work great. I have it. I've been using it. I'm making a video about that in the future, but I don't think it's worth it for the average person. The average Kindle battery will last you for several weeks. Having a wireless charger is not necessary unless your battery is dying every single night or you have a charger device every single night. It's more for convenience, not for practicality. So to recap here, you're paying $50 for four additional features. No advertisements, more storage capacity, an ambient light sensor, and wireless charging. All four of which you don't really need to get. The only one I would argue might be worth getting is the no advertisements. I like having those removed. It is annoying you have to pay for it, but having that mindful experience is really important to me. But you can get those no ads with the baseline model. Now an argument can be made that if you're buying a Kindle Paperwhite and you're already paying $20 more for no advertisements, you might as well pay a little bit more to get the signature model and get the additional features. That is a good point if you're already buying a Kindle Paperwhite and money is not a problem for you and you can afford the extra $3, you might as well get the signature edition. But in reality, for most people, it's not worth it. The one that I use every single day is actually the baseline Kindle with ads removed. I am more than happy with that. That is the one that I would recommend for most people buying a Kindle in 2021. I'm really interested to hear what you have to say about this. Leave a comment down below. Should people buy the Kindle Paperwhite or the Paperwhite Signature Edition? Let's see what most people out there are doing right now. If you enjoyed this video, check out my full review of the Kindle Paperwhite where I go into very incredible detail of every single feature the new device has to offer. Link for that on the screen right now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.